In today's industries where software applications are built on a day-to-day -day basis, developers always have to keep in mind regarding the architecture and the implementation of the code and also the UI through which the user will interact with the application. Now the only way to make sure that all these parameters are met is by using microservices and API. So hello all this is Sahiti on behalf of Edureka and I welcome you to this session on microservices versus API. In the session guys will focus on the differences between the two and I'll also talk about how and where microservices and API come together in the architecture, right? So on that note, let's get started with today's session. So the topics for today's session are as you can see on my screen. We'll start this session by understanding what are microservices and then I'll tell you what are API's. Once I tell you what are API's, we'll talk about where are API's used in microservices and finally I'll tell you the differences between the two, right? So I hope I'm clear with the topics for today's session. All right, so that's great. So on that note, let's get started with today's session. But before that, I would like to request all of you to subscribe to our Edureka YouTube channel to get daily notified on the top trending technologies, right? So let's start with the first topic for today's session. That is what are microservices? Now, what do you understand by the term microservices? Well, the term microservices defines itself. What I mean by that is it's basically small tiny services communicating with each other, right? So if I have to define microservices for you, then microservices or most commonly known as microservice architecture is an architectural style to build the applications. Now these applications are basically the software applications. So basically you can structure an application as a collection of small autonomous services modeled around the business domain. For example, let's say you know you have an e-commerce application, right? Your business domain is basically e-commerce. So for that you'll take care of what all functionalities and features are required. And according to that you'll build these services, right? Now when I say services, it's not with respect to the number. You can have any number of services based on the architecture or the application that you have, right? Now before microservices came into the picture industries were using the monolithic architecture. So what I mean by monolithic architecture is basically that you know you have the complete application stored in a single bucket. When I say stored in a single bucket what I mean is that you know all the functionalities and the features are stored at one place. So basically all the features the dependencies the functionalities of the complete application either it be the front end the back end all of them will be residing at a single place, right? So that's what monolithic architecture basically mean guys. So for this session, let's take an example and then we'll understand all the topics to that particular example. Now if you consider an e-commerce application, what do you think are the main three functionalities of it? For example, let's say you're using Amazon. What all do you see? You're a customer, right? You see all the products on Amazon and then you put your products into the cart and finally you order those products, right? That is basically the simple workflow if you have to understand. Now if you have to build this application using microservices what you can do is you can have mainly three functionalities that is the customer information the products available in the cart and all the products available on the website right now all these three functionalities can be put into different different services. What I mean by that is you can have service a having customer information service B having the products available in the cart and service C having all the products available in the application right. Now when the customer goes forward and orders a particular product you can have a composite microservice which will basically take data from all these three services and generate the output for the client, right? So I hope you've got an idea of what I'm talking about, right? Now as I was telling you that you know before microservices came into the picture there was monolithic architecture. How do you think all these functionalities of the application were stored in this kind of architecture? Well, it's really simple. What would happen would be all these three services that is the customer service the product service and the cart service would be residing in a single area and then there would be a data access layer through which you can access the data, right? So as you can see on my screen you have a client browser through which the client request for the information. So as soon as the client would request for the information on the application the request would be passed to this particular area where all the functionalities are present and the data would be retrieved from the data access layer and the database. So if I have to just define monolithic architecture for you, then it's really simple guys. Monolithic architecture is an architectural style in which all the functionalities or the required components would be inside one single block, right? So I hope that particular part is clear. So I hope that you've understood what was monolithic architecture and what are microservices. On that note, let's get into the second topic for today's session. That is what are APIs? What do you think APIs are? Obviously everybody has heard of this term API, right? 
So you can basically understand API's as a point of contact through which all the services communicate with each other to process the client request and send the response, right? So for example, let's say you know you've sent a client request. Let's say on Amazon you've requested for a phone, right? So if you just type phone, what will happen is that you know this particular request will be sent through API's to the respective functionality or a feature. Right and that particular functionality or a feature will retrieve the requested data and then will send back the response to the client, right? So if you see you're a client then this particular functionality or a feature present in the application and then in between both of you there's API through which we can communicate, right? So I hope that point was clear now while building and using these applications what developers do is that you know we basically use the crude operations when I say crude operations, what I mean by that is we basically create a resource, read a resource, update a resource, and delete a resource. So APIs are generally developed by using the RESTful style, and these methods are nothing but the HTTP methods. Now I'm sure you must have got confused when I said create a resource, read a resource, update a resource, and delete a resource. Well, guys, it's really simple to understand. For example, let's say you know you're using Book My Show, and then you want to find out the details of a specific movie. So what you do is you send a client request. So when you send a client request, you're basically asking for the information, right? So what will happen is that you know the information has to be read, and then the response has to be sent to the client. So that's basically reading a resource. Coming to creating, updating, and deleting. This is on basically the developer side where you know they keep adding the information to the application, or maybe specific movies details are updated, or maybe the complete movie is deleted, right? So basically the information of the movie is deleted once it is out of the market, right? So that's how basically it works now whenever we send a request what happens is that we are basically sending an HTTP request, right? So for that we use the HTTP methods, right? So next in the session, let's understand the different HTTP methods. So the HTTP methods are as you can see on my screen. We basically have the post get put and delete methods. So whenever you want to create a resource, you basically use the post method whenever you want to read a resource you use the get method whenever you want to update a resource you use the put method and whenever you want to delete a resource you use the delete method right so basically guys apis use these methods to basically communicate between the client and the respective functionality or the feature of the application right now if you want to know more about http methods and apis you can refer to my session on what is this api so on that note, this is all that you have to understand to understand the differences between API's and microservices, right? So now that I've told you, you know, what are microservices and what are API's, let's get into where are exactly API's used in microservices. Now when I was explaining API's for you, I was always saying that you know, they're basically a middle person between the client and the respective feature or the functionality. Now obviously that particular feature or the functionality can go into a specific service, right? So let's say you know we have a functionality of all the products present in the application Now that particular feature can be present in a specific service, right? So now when a client requests for all the products available in the application the request can directly go to that particular service and the response can be generated back. So I hope that point is clear. So what you can do is basically the application that we took the example that we took we had a client browser and in the monolithic architecture the customer information the product service and the cart service all these three services basically all these three functionalities were residing in the same area and then there was a common data access layer and then a common database right now when you break down this application or maybe when you refactor this application into microservices what you can do is you can have a specific microservice and then you can have its own data access layer and database and for each microservice there's a separate API, right? So basically the customer microservice will have a specific API, its data access layer and database. Similarly goes for the product microservice and the cart microservice. Now it's not necessary that you know there's single database for each and every microservice. It may also happen that you know two or three microservices share a common database through which the data is retrieved, right? So basically guys if you have to understand where API's are used in microservices, it's really simple. Each service will basically have its own API through which the services will communicate with the client, right? So for example, let's say you know you're a client and then you're asking for your own information, your own customer details. What will happen is as soon as you send the request, basically the API gateway will decide to which service this particular request has to be sent now since we want the customer details this particular request will directly go to the customer microservice 
and what will happen is that you know the required data will be retrieved from the api and then again the api will send back the requested response to the client right so basically that's all that you have to understand guys that you know each service will have its own api and then through that particular api you can communicate with that particular service right now it's not necessary that you know you need information from a single service right even in that scenarios what will happen is that you know each microservice will generate the requested data and all of them together will send back the requested response to the client right so i hope that you've understood where are apis used in microservices right now let's move forward with the final topic for today's session that is the differences between microservices and api now in this tutorial on microservices versus api i hope that you know you've understood what are basically microservices and what are apis guys these are completely two different things microservices is basically an architectural style through which you can build the applications in the form of small and autonomous services coming to apis apis are a set of procedures and functions which allow the consumer to use the underlying service of an application right so basically guys this is the main difference between microservices and api the microservices is basically an architecture through which you can build the application and apis is basically like a middle person between the client and the services through which you can establish communication between both of them right so i hope that point is clear also from the example that i had explained you i'm hoping that you know it's clear to you that you know apis are a part of microservices and thus it helps these services communicating with each other however while communicating with the other services each service can have its own crude operations to store the relevant data in the database not only this but while performing the crude operations apis generally accept and return the parameters based on the request sent by the user so for example if the customer wants to know the order details right so maybe he must have ordered few items what will happen is that you know the product details will be fetched from the product service the billing address and the contact details will be fetched from the customer service and the product purchased will be fetched from the cart service right so basically if you have to you know generate a specific data or maybe if you want a specific data all these services can communicate within each other with the help of apis and generate the requested response right so i hope it's clear to you guys so guys this was the basic differences between microservices and api microservices is basically a simple architectural style and apis are a set of procedures and functions which allow the consumer to use the underlying service of the application so if you're someone who is aspiring to build an application using microservice architecture i would always say that you know make sure that you know your apis are working and then all the services are working are collaborated with the apis in such a way that you know no request is harmed and maybe all the client requests are satisfied with the requested response right so i would just say go forward and build applications using microservices so on that note i end this session today i hope all of you found this session informative so if you have any further queries related to the session please comment in the comment section below until then that's all from my side today thank you and happy learning i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning